Today we are going from Cape May, New Jersey at Uches Marina up to Manasquan. We don't have a marina yet because uh, we haven't contacted them and we were looking for a good day to go. Today looks like a good day to go. So when I'm planning a trip like this, uh, it's 99 miles up on the outside. So some of the primary considerations are the winds, the waves, the current, and the tide. But I'll kind of try to take them in order the way that I plan this is. I looked at Manasquan, which is the inlet there, and got an idea of the tides. And so the best thing to do is try to arrive on a slack tide. So we've targeted around 1.30 today to arrive on a slack tide to get in there. That gives you the best chance of maneuvering your boat and uh, some of the currents can be a little bit challenging in there. We did go in there one time last loop. We hit it uh, just as the currents were starting to pick up so it can be a little challenging. So you want to take uh, that into primary consideration. The next thing is to look at is to look at what the waves are going to be out there because uh, we don't want to really travel in anything more than about three feet. So there's a couple ways to do that. So we'll take a look at some of the apps that are available to do that. Uh, obviously, you know, we go from, you know, the general to the more specific. So we've taken a look at Weatherbug and for our trip up through uh, the Atlantic today looks pretty good. We've looked at all the stations on there. And so then the next thing that we did was for a general planning tool is to use, I really like this tool. It's out there, it's called Passage Weather. So we're gonna to go to Passage Weather and this is on the internet. I haven't found an app for this yet, but basically what you do is you zoom in on the area that we're going to. We're going up here and you'll continue to zoom in and I'm gonna select this area right here. And it's going to give you three things. It's going to give you surface wind. It's going to give you surface pressure if you're interested in that. But more importantly, it's going to give us our wave height. So if we can kind of look at here, is here we are at the tip. Let's take a look at this. This is Sunday, the 6th of September. And we want to get it out here to see about 10 o'clock local, which would be about... 1500 UTC universal coordinated time and we can see here is that I have white and I have this very light blue and so I'll come down here and the waves are up to 0.5 meters this is important this is in meters okay and so then I have this uh, uh, the white and then I have the very light blue which goes up to one meter Okay, so that's telling me generally I'm in an area of zero to three feet. Okay, so we're going to drill down a little bit and we can go back and get the northern part of New Jersey, but it's about the same thing. So I won't bore you with going through that particular exercise. <clears throat> Real easy to find the tides. Uh, one of the apps that I use is Tides Near Me, and that gives you really a good portrayal of the tides in your particular area. So let's take a look at Manasquan Inlet and we'll take a look at the weekly view and today we know that the high tide is at 1102 and as I said we're going to show you a little bit more about how to find that slack tide where the slack tide is because of the high tide everything is rushed in the low tides everything rushed out. Very good app here tides near me. Now for the winds and the waves this is a great app it's called Windy, and there's a number of different Windies out there, but I particularly like this one. I'm going to show you the icon. It is this one here. So we'll go to Windy, and I'm going to show you a couple things that I've discovered on here. And these apps just keep getting better and better all the time. I would like to find this particular app so that I could see it on the iPad, and I'm still working with that. I think you have to pay for it on the iPad, which I don't mind paying for, but uh, we couldn't get a good connection. So on Windy, what you'll see here is, as you go out here, you see this color blue. Well, it's just not the ocean, but what it's telling you is, this means that this in here, the winds are zero to five knots. This is in knots. The other thing is, we can actually get an idea of the waves on here as well okay and so what I'm seeing here is my winds 2.8 knots as I drill down here in Ocean City and my waves are 1.9 feet and that's what that 
matches with what we saw on the passage weather as well. And it's eight seconds. So what does that mean? If you kind of put your hand out here and say this is the top of the crest of the wave, and we've got two feet to go, and I can count to roughly five seconds down here, and about five seconds up here, that's what the waves are going to look. So it's really not that earth shaking of a wave or a swell out there. To me it looks more like a swell, but we're going to actually see what it looks like when we get out there. A couple other things in planning this is that, well, what if the waves are not as expected and the crew really doesn't like it? There's a couple places we can go. Uh, we can go into Atlantic City, which is just about 40 miles up, about halfway up. There's also Barnegat Inlet. I'm comfortable with going into Absecon Inlet in Atlantic City. I've taken a look at that. And uh, also Barnegat Inlet, I've taken a look at that. Although it's a little bit more challenging, I did call and talk to Towboat US, and they said, yeah, uh, it's all good in there, just as long as you respect the uh, mar markers. People go in there all the time, kind of our bailout spots today in case we get weather that uh, is unexpected or we have some kind of a mechanical issue. We can always go into one of those places. So let's take a look at the route. The way we've done our route today is we have done it in Navionics and I talked to you once before about that is I plan on Navionics. I switch it over to Active Captain and then I import it into the chart plotter and it has drawn a really nice route for us all the way up pretty close to the to the coast here as it builds in and I'll take a look at that route and I will zoom in on it in detail because even though this has done it in really a minute or two is I want to spend a good 10 minutes or so zooming into all these little points here and taking a look at how close is it getting me to these inlets and where exactly is the magenta line taking me and I feel comfortable today with the route that Navionics has done. So let's see if there's anything else here that uh, we had looked at. We've looked at the weather overall, we've looked at the passage weather, we've looked at the tides, we've looked at windy and uh, I really do like the Windy app that I showed you very much. It seems like they keep adding functions to that and you can get the wind and the waves off of Windy. So a lot that goes into planning something like this. A lot of your uh, electronic uh, applications are out there and I'm sure you probably have your favorites but these are the favorites that I have at this point in time and you've got to continue to look and see what other apps are out there because it's a competition. They, they get better and better. Uh, they add more features. We've already taken a look down in the engine room. Everything looks good down there. I did switch the boat over to the aft tanks today just to try to balance things out. We were running off the main tanks for a while so we're going to burn off the aft tanks and burn those down to at least uh, uh, half a tank there. They run, uh, each tank has 112 gallons in it so we'll probably burn somewhere close to uh, 100 gallons today so we probably will arrive there with about half tanks on the aft tanks. Alright, next thing is we're going to be thinking about our checklist and coordinating with Rev uh, getting on the headset and getting the boat untied and pointed out toward the Atlantic Ocean so we'll see you out there.